Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrison from LearnYourLand.com and in this video we're going to be focusing on math and nature. Now you might be wondering what the heck does math have to do with nature? Well you see there's a particular sequence of numbers known as the Fibonacci sequence and if you're unfamiliar with this it was popularized many centuries ago though it's probably been around in nature since the beginning of time but it was popularized by an Italian mathematician known as Fibonacci and why this is important is that we see it being reflected all over in nature for example, in the scales of a pine cone, in the branching of a tree, in the leaf arrangement of a plant, and in the petals of a flower. Now, I recently attended a great event at Ohio Pile State Park in southwestern Pennsylvania, led by the park's environmental education specialist, Rose Bando. And the program was all about Fibonacci numbers in nature. And what's great is that Rose is not only an exceptional naturalist, but she's a former math teacher. So it was great to see her combining her love and her passion for nature and for math in this presentation and I had the fortunate opportunity to interview her afterwards and ask her a few questions. For example, what exactly is the Fibonacci sequence? Where do we see it in nature and why is this important? And I'm excited to be sharing this video interview with you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, I really appreciate it. Let's go see what Rose has to say about the Fibonacci sequence in nature. My name is Rose Bando and I'm one of the environmental education specialists here in Ohio Powell State Park. I was a former math teacher and so I just thought that this is my contribution to our park, uh, that you find the uh, sequence in everything around the park, in all of the flowers, the trees, the plants, uh, just the, the mating habits and gene genealogies of the animals and it's just all around us and so I just wanted to bring that to light. You'll find it everywhere. Um, the number of leaves um, on a, a plant, uh, poison ivy is a very good one, it has three leaves. Um, I failed to mention that the Fibonacci sequence is uh, two numbers uh, starting with zero and one and you add the two numbers to get the next number. So if you keep on going, it goes one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so on. And so you can find uh, a lot of plants that have three, five, eight, 13 petals on a flower, pineapples, cauliflowers, broccoli, all kinds of different fruits, uh, strawberries. They all either have um, spirals that are the Fibonacci number, 5, 8, 13, 21, or uh, there might be that many seeds or that many sections in a particular fruit. So uh, you could spend hours in the grocery store just finding different uh, fruits and vegetables that follow the Fibonacci sequence. The animals show the Fibonacci sequence in how they reproduce. Um, a lot of animals must wait uh, maybe two years or two months, depending on the animal, before they can reproduce again. And so if you have a hypothetical situation where you are looking at the reproduction of these animals, uh, you will notice that it will follow the Fibonacci sequence on how many pairs or how many actual bees or rabbits that you have um, each generation. The best example of Fibonacci sequence is the sunflower. Uh, it never disappoints. It's always a uh, sequence, whether you're looking at the seeds and the way they spiral in the head of the, uh, of the plant, or if you count the petals, it always coincides with how many spirals are in the seed head. And also, if you look at the leaves and the way they grow around the stalk, uh, they spiral up the stalk. And it's usually in a, uh, it's called the, the golden angle, and that's how they grow, going up around the stalk. If you go to the DCNR website, uh, if you look at any of the parks on that website, uh, it will give you a list of their programs. Um, I have a email list that I send weekly to those that would like to receive it and so um, we try to keep people informed of our programs and and we put posters around the whole park so that they know what's coming up that week. 